Hey, this is Jason, and I'm a research scientist at, at AI2. So today I'm going to talk about multitask vision and language representation learning. Vision and language is a very active area in the last few years, and we've seen a huge number of new tasks. By looking at the vision and language landscape, we can see the tasks such as visual question answering, image captioning, vision and language navigations, refer expressions, and multimodal verifications. This is still an incomplete list, so your theory tasks might not be mentioned here. With the divergence across different vision language tasks, what we usually do is to develop different models for different datasets or tasks. One obvious problem is there's uh, only a limited sharing despite the common needs for visual grounding. Take the question answering as example. So we have tasks such as uh, VQA, GQA, and figure QA. So each model is designed for a specific dataset. Thus, the model may learn uh, dataset specific groundings, which can be biased. In this talk, we want to answer these two questions. First, how to learn a generic visual grounding mechanism that can transfer to many tasks? The goal is to develop a common architecture with a small task specific head for different tasks. And the second question is, can this task be performed simultaneously by a single model? Thus, we want a single model that can solve all these tasks. This talk will contain two parts. First, I'll briefly introduce our work on learning task agnostic view linguistic features. Then, I will talk about multitask models for vision and language. OK, let's start. Transfer learning from Pritchard Network is a very popular scheme in both vision and language community. In vision, we first pre-train the uh, convolutional network on ImageNet. Then we can transfer the models to object detections, semantic segmentations, and post estimations. In language, we train transformer-based models on datasets such as Bookcorpus and Wikipedia. Then we can using the models and transfer to question answering, common sense inference, and sentiment analysis. For both domain, we can learn representations on a lot of different concepts, such as different breeds of dogs. In vision language, we care about groundings, which is alignment between different modalities. Here, we present Wilbert, which can be pre-trained and transferred to uh, different vision and language downstream tasks. The core of Wilbert has two parts. First, it is a self-supervised multimodal transformers. Second, it is used the large-scale webly aligned image pairs to train the model. This is the first part. For the model side, we first take a look at uh, how bidirectional encoder representations from our transformers, which is we call BERT. The model takes the sentence A and the subsequent sentence B as input. The model is basically consisting a stack of transform transformer layers here. So it has two objectives. For the mask language modeling, it will randomly masking some tokens and predict those tokens through the context information. For the next sentence prediction objective, it will random sample sentence or the subsequent sentence, and the object is to predict whether it is in order or not. Given the image, we first use a pre-trained detectors to detect the uh, like to, to extract features. So an intuitive way is to replace one sentence with the image feature. Thus, we feed them together to into a single stream Wilbur model. For the single stream models, it's will looking like this. So basically, the left side is an image uh, feature, and the right side is a, is a sentence feature. And we feed them into the, a bunch of transformer layers and getting the final representations. One problem of directly using the BERT model we found is different modality may require, uh, is different modality may require different level of abstractions. For linguistic stream or language stream, given the word man, we have a single layer or embedding layer to convert to representations. Well, for visual stream, given an image, it usually involves more than 100 layers for the final representations. Another reason is that we've 
we, we, we are forcing the visual tokens in the same pre-trained space as the linguist one. This might introduce some negative uh, to the model. Instead, our model is two stream, which has independent parameters for vision stream and language stream. So each stream is a stack of transformer layer and a co-attention transformer layer. To model the interactions between different modalities, the co-TRM layer will attain to the output of TRM layer from another modality. Thus, we use co-attention to model interactions. The two three models also provide us a lot of flexibility to encode each different modalities. For example, we can have a variable number of layers per modalities. This will correspond to one of our motivations, which we can uh, have less encodings for the vision branch. Our model can be initialized with pre-trained bird model, thus we can transfer knowledge to a learned, uh, to, uh, from the learned uh, uh, test corpus into our model. Here, we will briefly illustrate how to pre-train the model. Uh, we use this large-scale webly aligned image test pairs as a pre-training data. In this work, we use conception captions, which is automatically convert from uh, all test uh, to captions. For example, given the first image, uh, the direct caption is pop artists perform at a festival in a city, and a worker helps to clean the debris. Sculptures by person adorn these trees outside of the debris office. Since it's automatically convert from the all test, the caption is noisy, but we have around 3.3 billion pair, uh, pairs, which is an order of magnitude larger than code data set. We have two training objectives, mask multimodal learning and multimodal alignment. In mask multimodal learning, we randomly masking image patches and tokens, and the target is reconstructed the mask input using the single contest. This is following the BERT uh, objective. In, in multimodal alignment, we randomly sample images and caption pair and predict whether image and caption correspond to each other. So the so, so, so fun question is, what does Wilbur learn from pre-training? So we first answer this question by sampling captions uh, in an MCMC fashion. So in this case, we will first feed in the, uh, with octal mask tokens uh, as a test input, and then we will sample one word at a time, and we will repeatedly doing this process. For example, given the man word, we will sample shops, and it will uh, doing recursively doing this. So here are some samples captions uh, yeah, uh, from the from the MC, MC's fashion. So the first, given this image, the caps our model can generate a happy young successful businesswoman in all black suit is smiling in camera in a busy office. Something like a gray texture map with a national flag and a binary code isolated on a white background. And so these are some decent captions our model is uh, generated. But we also see some uh, like uh, the, uh, so some, some like incorrect part, which is marked in the red. So those are largely because of the model is trained on concept captions, which is has a lot of noise. Okay, so uh, we we also answer this. Also, we also answer these questions by visualizing this uh, the co-attention layer, uh, 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 the distributions of the co-attention layer. So for these models we have the six co-TRM uh, layer, and each layer has eight head. We visualize the image to sentence attention. So basically we show the box colored based on maximum attended ratio verse. Given the image and the corresponding caption, a boy and his mom pet the black and white sheep. So we color each uh, visual word out with a uh, different underline, uh, with, uh, with different colors. So as we can see uh, in layer one and head five, we can see there's a lot of pink regions was marked out uh, on the, uh, around the ship. And the pink uh, box is corresponding to the word white, though which is makes sense. On layer one and head seven, we see the red uh, box, which is corresponding to boy, and uh, sign box, uh, which is corresponding to ship. 
And if you look closely, you can even look, if you even found there's a green box, which is corresponding to the word pet, which is really nice. So our model can learn the alignment between vision and language from different, from the pre-training. That is good. Given the pre-trained model, we want to transfer to different downstream tasks. In this paper, we consider four tasks. So VQA, given an given a image and a question, we want to give the answer. And VCR basically involves this common sense reasoning. Refer expression, which you give a phrase, you want to locate it, the image patches corresponding to the phrase. And caption-based image retrieval, which you are, uh, which you locating the image from a pile of images. I will show how to modify the pre models for each downstream tasks and ignore the ex experiment details, since most of them will be included in the next project. For refer expression, we will learn a logic for each region. This is a linear layer on the top of fused features. For other three tasks, we look at the features, which is a point-wise modification between the image token and CIS token, and apply to layer MLP and do the classification. To sum up, our first part, uh, we show that a single pre-trained based architecture is highly transferable to a range of vision language tasks. These findings is verified by several concurrent works. They have either single stream models like uh, Uniter and VisualBird, or two stream models such as LSMERT. The model also pre-trained on different datasets. We can roughly classify them into in-domain dataset, such as COCO and the visual genome, and out-of-domain dataset, such as conception captions and SPU. The second part of the talk is to learn a multitask models for vision and language. Recall that we just introduced to first pre-trained with web wise visual groundings. Then the same models can transfer to tasks like human wise groundings such as uh, for refer expression tasks, given the phrase swimming elephant, the model will locate the corresponding regions. And for VQA task, given the question, what is the juvenile elephant doing, the model can predict swimming. Note that for the task specific fine tuning, we still learn different parameters for different tasks. For multitask learning, we want to learn a single model to solve the task uh, from both tasks. So the model will have two task specific output and the same backbone. Given the image and the questions, the left head will predict swimming. And for the same models, given the image and refer expressions, the right head will locate the region of swimming elephant. So we can learn the concept of, in this case, we can learn the concept of juvenile elephant from the question answering. And we can learn the concept of swimming from refer expressions. The advantage is obvious. In this case, we can, uh, the, the concept can learn from one task, can be used to other, other tasks. Such the model uh, is learn a more general multitask uh, vision language representations. I will introduce details from three aspects, the models, the task and datasets, and training. We use the Wilbert model, which I mentioned in the first section uh, uh, of, the task, of the talk, and with a couple of modifications. First, we, use, we only applied uh, aligned image caption pairs for mask multimodal modeling. Uh, this is because this, uh, uh, the, the, the not aligned pair will introduce some noises. And we mask the overlapped image regions, which is IOU is less than 0.04, to remove these duplications of the information leak. And uh, we also train the separate head per task definitions uh, to enable multitask and we add input tokens to denoting each task. This will give the model a better sense of which tasks are uh, given the input query. For the task and dataset, we train a single model on 12 vision language datasets. Those are the datasets list. We have four task groups, a vocabulary-based vocabulary VQA, which is the goal is to predict answers given the image and the question. So we have VQA V2, genome QA, and GQ dataset. Caption-based image retrieval, where the goal is to retrieve the target image from a pair of images. So we have Flickr CDK and Coco captions. Multimodal verifications, which is to verify the statement of a single image or two images. We have the visual intelligence and NLBR2. 
And finally, we have refer expressions. The goal is given a phrase, a question, or dialogue. We want to locate it, the corresponding image regions. So here we have a bunch of refer code data set and visual 7W pointing, and guess what? This is an overview for all the tasks and the groups. One problem is many data set is covered with the same image sources differently. For example, the same image uh, is, a training, uh, is a training example for task A. However, it's a test example for task B. So we carefully filter out this, these images, which is about 13% uh, of all the images we have to make a clean training set. These figures show the percent of train well images, which is overlapping with other task test set. So for example, in VQA, we, ha we have around 20% of images, which is overlapping with other tasks. We train the model with a batch-wise round robin, which uh, each batch only has uh, only sample from one task. And we iteratively update the model with all the data sets. One problem is that the co uh, is com uh, in common multitask learning is that data sets differ in the size and number of epochs to train. So in this project, we propose the task scheduler called dynamic stop and go. It is actually dynamic slow and go uh, instead of uh, stop. So this is how the training scheduler work, how it's uh, working. So per epoch, uh, we, validate, we, we will evaluate the validation loss for all the tasks. So if the loss has not improved by X percent over K epoch, then we think that the, uh, the model is converged. So we will put a stop or slow mode uh, into the task. And if the task has degraded by Y percent lower than the best, we think the model is suffering catastrophic forgetting, such as we will put the, the task into go mode again. So uh, in, the, in the slow mode, we will uh, batch every D iterations, which basically will update sparsely. And in the go mode, we will batch every iteration. So we will update this task uh, with every, uh, like, uh, uh, in every iteration. This is the hyperparameters we use in our models. So those are fairly standard. So for example, uh, we will deter, we will, like, if this model has not improved by 0.1% in two epochs, we'll put it in stop mode. And if the model is degraded in 0.5% and lowers the best, we'll put it in the go, and we'll put it in the go mode. To visualize the dynamic, dynamic stop and go training dynamics, we plot the model for each task during the training iterations. At 5,000 iterations, we can see that uh, refer Coco Plus and Visual 7W is in the stop mode, and the other remains in the go mode. At 10,000 iterations, Flickr 30K and refer Coco task is put into stop mode, while refer Coco Plus is put into go mode again. At 2,000 iterations, the QA tasks are still into the go mode without putting, uh, without any stop mode, uh, like uh, during the training. On 30,000 iterations, we see the most smaller data set is put into stop mode, except the guess what, which is a little bit harder tasks. So this is the whole dynamic stop and go training uh, dynamics. One interesting finding is that the data set size is not the only factor. So the task difficulty is also affected training dynamics. So we see that the guess what and NLVR2 and the so, uh, visual entanglement and VQA, they have a more frequent update with respect to the data set size. Thanks to the dynamic stop and go like training scheduler, we can directly use the hyperparameters in the single task uh, to, uh, to like transfer them into multitasks. So we, will, so we don't need to fine tune any parameters here. So each parameter uh, can directly apply it on the multitask setting. After training this multitask model, the question we'd like to answer is, uh, how do tasks across different groups affect each other? So what about within each groups? And how can, how, and does what multitask training learns the rich representations? To answer the first questions, uh, we want to evaluate the cross-group effect with uh, the representative tasks. Here we're selecting the VQA V2, Flickr 30K, and Visual 7W pointing, and VR, VR as, a, as a representative task for each group. 
So we jointly train our pairs and triplets of group representation tasks together. To measure the relative gain, so basically we want to, uh, we firstly getting the performance of A in the joint training model and divide it by the performance of A of a single training model and we, and we minus by one. For example, if we want to measure the relative gain of VQV2 given the factor 30K, we will uh, calculate the VQA score of the joint training, uh, uh, joint, joint training model and, divide, and normalize by the VQA score of a single training model and divide it by one. And if the result is positive, that means flicker CDK has a positive effect on VQV2. This is the result on, uh, of cro for cross-group training. And we can see that uh, like uh, v on VQA, the NLVR has a little bit negative uh, impact. For flicker CDKs, the NLVR has a, a, a huge negative, which is about 4.13% on VQ7W. So all the other data set will contribute positive to the, uh, to the performance. And on, v on VLVR2, like all the models give the positive effect to the performance. If we average by row, we can get the average gain to receive. So, if we, uh, so we see that the cross-group uh, training is harmful to physical k well, NLVR gets the most benefits with an improvement of 1.48%. If we average by column, we can get the average gain provided. So we can see that now VQA, Flickr 30K, and, v and Visual 7W both provide positive to the other tasks, while NLVR is the bad guy in the group. And interestingly, NLVR benefit from VQA V2 and Flickr 30K most, but provided negative effect, negative, uh, like effect to others. So see the papers for triplet of tasks. To study the, the in-group effect, we jointly train uh, just within the task group. So uh, for example, uh, here we see that if we just training uh, each task within the, each group, we see that uh, all the task is improved. This is not surprising because those tasks uh, is, uh, by definition is very similar to each other and thus can help each other. If we train on all tasks, which basically uh, train tail tasks on one model, we see that uh, for VQA and for expression and the multimodal verification, it is improving, but for caption-based image retrieval, it decreased. So it is, this matches our earlier findings that NLBR32 has the most negative impact to the, to the Flickr CDK. If we check the absolute performance for all tail tasks, so we can see that uh, this is the independent performance of Wilbert. And this is a multitask model, uh, like uh, which is training on 12 tasks together. So basically what we can see is that it outperformed 10 out of 12 independent models. And uh, even the uh, model with a slightly lower performance is very similar. If we use the multitask model as a starting point and fine tuning on a single task data set, so we can see further gains for each tasks. And our model sets the new state of the art on seven out of 12 data sets. Here is a qualitative example of our multitask model. Given four image and the caption, three zebras are grazing in the grass field, the model can retrieve the correct image. Given the referred cocoa plus uh, phrases, swimming elephant, the model can locate its elephant was swimming in the river. Given the questions, which is the baby elephant, the model located to the yellow regions, which can correctly answer the visual 7W question. Given questions like how many zebras on, are there on the right of the image, the answer is two. And given the visual entanglement statement, no elephant in the image are swimming, the prediction is contradiction, which is, uh, which is true with uh, what the image say. All of these predictions are from the single model, and our demos are available at wilbert.cloudcv.org. To wrap up, in this talk, we present three techniques that can enable multitask learning in the vision language. First, Wilbert model, which provides a unified architecture for different tasks. Second, pre-training objective, which can learn the visual groundings 
to rapidly supervise data. Third, dynamic stop and go training scheduler, which can effectively control the multitask training. And that's all for my talk. Thank you.